Mitch Steele teases us with a little more information on what his next project is. There's a milk stout recall. Plus, Oktoberfest celebrations kick off nationwide. I'm your host, Chris Hardy, and this is your Straight Beer News for the week of September 18th, 2016. So on Monday this week, Mitch Steele gave us a little bit more of the detail of what his next new project is going to be. Mitch Steele spent 10 years at Stone Brewing. Most recently, he was their brew master. And in June, he announced that he was going to be leaving Stone to embark on a new project, something that he called a bucket list project. Seems he's teaming up with American Beer Works on a project to create a new brew pub in the Atlanta area, on the Atlanta Belt Line. He's uh, providing very few details other than a little bit on the location and a little bit about the facility. So what we know about the facility is that it's described as a state-of-the-art facility that will be both a brewery and also a restaurant. Um, they're planning a rooftop bar as well as a beer garden. Um, some of the other amenities include brewery tours and be doing home brew classes. So if you're a home brewer like I'm a home brewer and are interested in learning more about that side of uh, the beer industry, apparently they'll be offering classes, something I'm kind of interested in hearing. Now if you don't know much about Mitch Steele himself, he wrote the book on the American IPA. So we're expecting some interesting, great things out of him coming up uh, with his new project. Uh, we don't have an exact date yet, but it appears opening is set for sometime in 2017. Next up, Left Ham Brewing announced that they're issuing a recall on their Milk Stout Nitro. This is a very popular beer. Uh, so go check your bottles and see what the best buy date is. I'll be showing the details of what labels are being recalled here shortly. Left Hand Brewing wants you to know, though, that the beer is good. It is consumable. Uh, the, the factor here in play is that it's overcarbonated. So they suspect that some foreign yeast entered during the bottling process and is causing a secondary fermentation so the the beers themselves are a little over carbonated and if you pour the beer slowly there doesn't seem to be any issue it's consumable it tastes great everything's fine however they recommend doing a hard pour which is essentially tipping the bottle immediately vertical and dumping it into the glass this will allow the beer to breathe and to give a nice cascading effect, uh, a nice visual, and that's their preferred recommended way to do it. However, if you do it with these particular bottles that are being recalled, there's too much carbonation, and so it will overflow your glass. Uh, so look for the details on that and see what you have, if you have any in stock. Uh, they're asking that you return the bottles directly to the point of purchase, or if that's going to be an issue, to contact them directly and they'll look at getting your replacements. Replacements are running at, they're expecting about four to six weeks, so um, just a heads up on So the this weekend kicks off Oktoberfest, uh, not only in Munich, uh, the traditional place uh, for Oktoberfest, but also nationwide. Many places are doing Oktoberfest in Detroit. There are numerous places to go, both within the city or in the suburbs. I spent my time in Detroit at a authentic, uh, very unique gem of a building um, called the Dakota Inn. And it's kind of in an unassuming, unexpected area of the city. Uh, it's an authentic Bavarian style building restaurant. And they do these, it's, well, the building is almost 100 years old and been doing these uh, Oktoberfest for n a number of years. At this Oktoberfest, the, some of the common things that, that I experienced are uh, patrons uh, wearing the, the chicken hats. It's a very popular item. I don't think there's anything traditional with it. Uh, it's just something to wear to add to the festive atmosphere. Um, maybe because of the chicken dance, which is usually played. Um, there's also a polka band, which is usually associated with Germany and German dancing. And so that polka band will play the chicken dance and everybody gets up and dances the the chicken dance and a number of people are wearing their chicken hats so it kind of adds
adds to the, that atmosphere. Uh, in addition, there will be, um, throughout the course of the Oktoberfest, um, one of the managers in the restaurant leads the group in uh, singing of Hitzelbank. And it's a traditional German song that um, the words, in, in this particular restaurant, the words are posted up on a wall and the manager will lead us through the singing of the song as the band plays. It's a great raucous roar in time. There's also a number of German beers, German fest beers, particular, uh, particularly on tap for the Oktoberfest this year. Um, so some of the tap handles that I saw were uh, Wein Stefaner, Paul Anner, Spaten, uh, just to name a few. If you're in the Detroit area and looking for a place to enjoy Oktoberfest over the next couple of weeks, uh, Dakota Inn is a great place and I highly recommend it. So that'll do it for this week. Thanks again for watching. I'm your host, Chris Hardy. And remember, if you like what I'm doing, please subscribe or let me know by giving me a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate that. Or leave a comment in the comment section. I'd love hearing from you. You can also reach me on Twitter at Straight Beer. If you're like me and you get tired of the same news rehash day in and day out, I'm looking at you. Obama birthers. For the news that really matters at the end of your week. I'm talking about straight beer news. That is it. Beer news, the news that matters to you, is what matters to me. I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.